you don't know the door that you have opened for the attack of the enemy into your life. And then things just happen and you think, oh, it's just natural. Things are just happening. No, there's nothing that happens natural. Either there is a spirit of God or there is a spirit of the devil behind every situation. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Don't lie to yourself. Life is spiritual. Whether you're educated or not, I want you to get that into your brain. Life is spiritual. Aha. Uh -huh. Man is made up of three components. Number one, body. Come on, let's go. Number two. Number three. Man is made up of three components. And the target of God is your soul into your spirit. The target of the devil is your soul into your spirit. Both God and the devil, they are all what? Spirits. And they can't function without a body to use. I've taught this about, I've taught about this, that the devil needs your body to use you. The same with God. He also needs your body to use you. Because you can't hate me. We need because you are good. You have a nature of God. Once you accept Christ, the nature of God is given back to you. But what happens? Can you be possessed by demons? Can you be possessed by demons? Once you give your life to Jesus, can you be possessed by demons? Come on, who says yes? You can be possessed by demons. Just those who think if you open a door, you'll be possessed by demons, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Those who say, yes, a Christian can be possessed by demons, raise your hands. Okay. Who's those who say, no, you cannot be possessed by demons once you're a Christian, raise your hands. Those who say, I don't know, raise your hands. Those, ah, but you can't, either you know or you don't, right? Let's respond, right? Those who say Christians can be possessed by demons, raise your hands. Okay. Those who say Christians cannot be possessed by demons, raise your hands. Okay. Those who say, well, pastor, I'm not sure, I don't know. Raise your hands. I want to help if there's nobody who is ready to know, then I will not help you. I said, if you don't, should I call one by one so that you can answer it? If you are not sure, raise your hand because I'm seeing you. If you are not sure, I'm not saying you know. If you are neutral or you don't know, raise your hand again. It's better to be faithful. Amen. Then you definitely get help. Okay, so here's the thing. Once we accept Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, it's very important for every Christian to know this. Once you accept Jesus, do you see Jesus walking and coming in your heart? Do you? No. Do you see him physically walking, coming into your heart? No. So how do you know that you are now a Christian? How do you know? <laughs> my class, come on, my class. Okay, so we receive Jesus by faith, right? We receive Jesus by what? We receive Jesus by? Come on, everybody. We receive Jesus by? Yes. Even blessings, we receive them by? Faith. Deliverance, we receive by? Faith. Everything, we receive by faith. Life is what? Spiritual. I'm standing here, I've got angels, but you can't see them with your physical eyes. But right now, if you have eyes to see, I've had some people come and tell me, Pastor, when you were preaching, I saw an angel on your right. Uh-huh. Those who are given the gift to see can see in the spirit room. But we need spirit eyes, spiritual eyes, all of us as believers. So when you, when you are born again, Jesus will come and dwell in your heart by faith. Right? By faith. The Bible says, Jesus says, I and my Father and the Holy Spirit we will come and I make our what? Abode in you. It means once you accept Christ, you become a temple of the Lord. You are no longer, your life, 
You have removed. It's cleaned. It's clear. So, demons cannot possess you. Because possessions, possession means owning. So, demons can't own you because you're a Christian. When you come to church like this, you can't be possessed by a demon, right? So, but why does Christians do evil things? Why do they do things that you can tell, you can see a demon in someone, but they are Christians? How come? What happens? Mm -hmm. Hear that? Exactly. So, you, don't, oh, you are not possessed, but you become oppressed. So, a lot of Christians, they are oppressed by demons. <laughs> this is why Christians have witches in church. Ah, oh, one day I saw a woman in the spirit with a snake all in his waistline. Oh, mama, 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 don't be so naive in church. There are witches. That's why I'm gonna call Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw it. Mm -hmm. You need eyes, amen. So the devil, what he does, his mode of operation is described as witchcraft. Witchcraft, what is it? Is the control, the influence, or a manipulation of persons or objects through the unseen force of evil spirits. Should I repeat again? These are the evil spirits, they, they operate through the control. They control your life, your mind. They influence you to do evil things. They manipulate you to do what you don't want to do. Or they use objects, voodoo, spells, jinxes, crystal balls, all those things. Those are objects manipulated, being used to do evil through unseen forces of evil spirits. Where do these evil spirits come from? I taught last week, right? Go and listen to the, um, to the um, uh, YouTube uh, or to the Spotify or whatever. The last week's message, I was teaching why, do, why does God allow suffering? And I explained where the devil came from and why we suffer. So tonight, this morning, I want you to understand we were talking about a third of angels who fell from heaven, right? These are a third that operating, masquerading as demons, harassing people left, right, and center. Have you ever seen someone who comes to church and when I start preaching, they are sleeping? <laughs> you don't know they are oppressed, they need deliverance in the name of Jesus. Ah! Because they will not allow you to listen to the word. Go and watch a movie. You will not sleep for three hours. I'm telling you, this is a reality. When we come to church, we say worship. People don't know the power of worshiping. They have no idea what it means to worship God. Let me tell you, the devil doesn't want anything from you. Remember 40 days of Jesus and 40 nights. Remember, remember, the devil goes to Jesus, the son of man, God himself, boldness from the devil. He stands in front of him. He said, let's talk. Let's have a deal. After 40 days of prayer and fasting, don't play with the devil. He's an ancient serpent. He was created before you were created. He's smarter than you. He knows every trick. That's why the Bible says, children of light, we must be what? Our eyes, open our eyes. It even says the children of darkness are wiser than you Christians. Because we don't know these things. We just live life like everything is okay. Life is spiritual, children of God. Life is spiritual. You got to know these things are there. Why are we Christians? To fight and push back. That's why we are Christians today. We are not just the Christians to say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and walk like pious and, you know, that's not who we are. We are mighty warriors. His name is Jehovah Giboa. The Bible says our God is a man of war. He's a mighty warrior. And he partners with us. 
We push back demons. We push back evil spirits. We don't play games when it comes to demons. We kick them out in the name of Jesus. Jesus' biggest ministry was kicking out demons. I don't know the Bible that you read. Mine is full of Jesus casting out demons. Hallelujah. That's our responsibility as Christians. Jesus himself, the devil came. He said to him, after 40 days of prayer and fasting, he says, let's make a deal. He took him to this, all these places and these places. Now he took Jesus. Listen to the diary. He takes Jesus to the high place. Highest point. Huh? The pinnacle. He says to him, you see all these kingdoms on earth? Do you see them? As if God didn't create them. Can you imagine? So painful. What a challenge. It's God who created the kingdoms. He knows them. But he takes Jesus up there, God himself. He says, you see all these kingdoms? I can give them to you. Why did he say that? He said, because they were given to me. Who gave them to him? Adam. You and me. Adam. Yes. On a silver platter, the kingdoms that were created by God for Adam to enjoy, he handed on a silver platter in Genesis chapter 3. He said, you can have it. Now the devil is boasting. Before the same God, <laughs> the devil has got guts. Don't think he's afraid of you. You've got nothing. Listen to the word of God so that you can stand against him. He says, there is nothing I'm looking for from you. All I need from you is fall down from this pinnacle and worship me. Ah, yeah. Fall to your knees and what? Worship me. There's nothing the devil wants from you. He wants your worship. This is why when you begin to worship here, don't play games. I'm actually surprised by people who move around during worship. You are not honoring the presence of God. Honestly, this is why you are so susceptible and open to demons. Because time of worship is sacred. There is nothing as important as worship in all that we do, not even preaching in church. Listen to me. God does not come to church to be preached to. God does not come to church to be healed by your prayers. God come to every church for just one thing. He receives worship from your heart. That's all he comes from. Nothing else. So if you miss worship, this is where I've got to pray for our worship team. Let's put hands together for Shepherd. God bless you, my son. We, we must pray for our worship team because they are a target for the enemy's attacks. There is no worship team that stands without the grace of God. This is why we must cover the team because the devil knows the power. All he's looking for is true worshipers. People who worship him, he was ready to give up all the kingdoms if Jesus could only worship him. This is why it is so hard for a believer to be rich and to be a true Christian. Aha! Either you are going to follow riches and leave God aside. Oh! Yeah, you guys, listen to me. The devil will not allow you to be rich and be faithful before God. This is why riches for Christian is a battle. Because there are levels that have got to get to. Until he says, worship me. And you say, no. And the business goes down. Ay, 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 ay. Have you ever spoken to Christian business men and women? They will tell you the battles that they face with the enemy. Because for you to remain faithful in God and worship him with wealth. Ha! It is his wealth. He claims it is his wealth given to him. So he gives to whom he wants. So he says, sell your soul to me and I'll give you whatever you want. You don't need to labor for wealth. You don't need to labor to get there, to be familiar, to be famous. Just to sell your soul to me. I'll give you everything you want. And after a few years, he kills you. Because he's not a good God. He's evil. He's evil. So witchcraft is so real. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on that one, but just a recap for those who are not here. Please listen to Friday teaching. I taught on what occult means, and I taught on how um, I gave a partial list of snares, things like um, 
fortune telling, Ouija boards, cards, tarot cards, good luck charms, uh, eight cascaises, some of them I may not pronounce them well because these are practiced here in America and not in Africa. So the, the names, I might not uh, be able to really accurately pronounce some of them. But these people are doing ignorantly. They don't even know what they're doing. Horoscopes, all those things, Ouija boards, uh, what do they call trans transcendental meditation, uh, yoga, hypnosis, drugs, tranquilizers, and pain relievers, incense, dungeon and drangles, uh, palm reading, automatic handwriting, piercing, horoscopes, signs of zodiac, voodoo, magic, levitation, water witching, tea leaf reading, uh, secret organizations and lodges, eight balls, smoking, chewing tobacco, dipping snuff, drinking alcohol. I've got the whole list. If you go on Friday, because of my time, I'm not going to exhaust the list. And I just wanted to let you know that a lot of people are practicing witchcraft but in ignorance. So, witchcraft is just what? Witchcraft. Do you listen to me? Witchcraft is just what? There is no white magic or a black uh, witchcraft. There's no white witchcraft or black witchcraft. Witchcraft is just witchcraft. In my language, we say, Uroi, Uroi. Muroi, Muroi. Meaning a witch is just a witch. Whether white or black, a witch is a what? A witch. Hallelujah. And in churches, people are worshipping. Are worshipping idols. I'll tell you something that really hurt me when I was um, uh, reading the Bible some other time. I, I went to uh, put, me, put for me to Ephesians 6, 12. Something that really broke my heart. I was asking God, why is there so much witchcraft in Africa? I was hurting because it didn't make sense. And then the Lord says, no, 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 no. There's also a lot of witchcraft in America, but they just the people are ignorant. There's so much ignorance among the people. But the difference is that in Africa, it's so pronounced. And it's so rampant, it's not much of a secret. Everybody in the community knows that my Ningi is a witch. And when she tells you that tomorrow you'll see, and you'll see for sure, most people, they didn't wake up. Yeah, yeah, in Africa, you don't play games. If someone tells you, you will see. You, you will go and apologize. Go on your knees and apologize. Apolo if you have nothing, if you're not a Christian, go and apologize. If you're a Christian, don't sleep that night. You got to engage in warfare because they'll come after you for sure. And you will see them. It's not a secret. They will appear to you. And you can't do nothing about it. So here in America, people, they think these are just jokes. <laughs> but when you come from Africa, you know it's a reality. So when they see us pray the way we pray, they think we are crazy. No, we are not crazy, my dear friends, Americans. We are not crazy. We know witchcraft. And we know what the devil can do. So we don't play when we begin to pray. We pray like crazy people because that's how the witches do it in Africa. <laughs> so we got to be above and pray. And pray. So we pray and fast a lot. I was saying that I was hurting. I said to God, I've looked at Genesis. I saw Hagar, an African, a black woman. I saw Zipporah, the wife of uh, Moses, an African. I saw Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, a, a, a black man. I saw Abid Meleki, Jere who saved Jeremiah from the pit. A black man. I saw uh, Simon of Sarin, Sirene who uh, carried the cross of Jesus. And I was actually thinking, I saw Hobab. Hobab, the father man who guided the children of Israel through the wilderness. Come on, somebody. These are black people in the Bible. I'm looking at all that and I'm asking God. I saw the Ethiopian eunuch, the man who took the gospel to Africa. I'm like, God, with all these black people in the Bible, I look at um, who else? I, I look at Mark, the man who, know, who wrote the book of Mark, a black man. I'm like, God, this is not fair. There are so many. 
black people in the Bible. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, I'm looking at uh, uh, the founding fathers who wrote the theology of Trinity, black people, before the, the, the gospel went to, to the West. Come on, church. Nimrod, the mighty hunter, a black man. The Bible says he was the mighty, mighty hunter, a black man. Nimrod, the son of Cush, a Cushite. I'm like, God, so why? Queen Sheba, the richest queen. I'm like, God, why? It didn't make sense to me. I looked at Africa, there's oil in Africa. The richest continent with minerals is Africa. Why are we so poor? Why do we have to go through colonialism? Why do we have to go through slavery? Why God? Why is the devil attacking Africa so much? Lack of education, insufficient food, poverty. Why so backward? We are consumers. Why God? Yet we are the richest continent, but the poorest in the world. It's a lament. It's a tragedy. Why do we have black on black crime? Why cruelty against each other? Why kill each other? Why are we like crabs? We can't let one of us go up there. The moment he starts carrying up the ladder, we begin to pull them down. Why the spirit of God? Why do we promote the inferior? When we see someone who has got a talent, we pull them down. Why, God? I'd rather take my cousin who is not even educated with no degree, make him the managing director, take the managing director, just to make him uh, a, 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 an officer clerk. Why, God? Why possession of power like that? Why by Godry and tyrant in Africa? Why our leaders so cruel? Let me just highlight seven problems why Africa is like what you are. I'm not proud to say it, but it's so much pain I'm saying it. Number one, idolatry. I don't have time to go into all those things, but Friday Bible study, I'm going to go one by one and show you what I mean by idolatry. Idol worship is rampant in Africa. Who comes from Africa who tell me that your ancestors didn't worship idols? Tell me, if you're here. They worshipped idols in Africa. Even if your father hasn't done it, but his father has already done it. Idol worship. Number two, sin and iniquity. Who tell me that they didn't murder a slave who had come? to work in your family, in your compound. And they murdered him. They promised him a wife. And when he demanded his wife, they look at this beautiful girl and they look at this man who is taking care of cattle and sheep outside. Instead of giving the girl to be the wife, they decide to kill him. And that spirit and that blood is picking in that family. And it has got a legal right to torment and cause all the girls not to be married in that family. Because when he goes before God, he says, God, like the blood of what? Of who? The blood of who? Abel. The Lord said, what did the Lord say? I heard. What did he say? Come on, everybody. What did the Bible say? I heard what? Blood. You are not killing a God. When you kill a human being, the voice speaks. He goes and reports to God. He says, why did they kill me? You cannot kill a human being and go scot free. So sin and iniquity in our families. Demon worship. 
We have worshipped demons. We have worshipped demons. Go from Genesis. We have worshipped demons. Who tell me that they will not take a bow and put it in the village and pour some, uh, some what do you call it? The, the alcohol, that alcohol which they make the seven days, pour it on the cow. We have worshipped the demons. Every family has got grandfather and grandmother coming out from a child, a seven-year-old child, and everybody worship that child in the village. They say, this child is a what? My grandmother or my uncle or whatever. Demon worship. We have worshipped demon Mashavi. Mashikiro. We have worshipped all those things. In Africa, our parents have done it. You might not have done it, yes. But you are not excused. Ignorance is what keeps you where you are. Because if you don't understand what they did in your family, then you are in trouble. Sacrifices to dark powers. Who we have seen in Africa, I don't know here in America, I know those things. This is why you guys here in America, you might not understand. We are coming from Africa, we tell you because we have witnessed these things. Sacrificing to demons, they kill a cow. Very early, like 4 a.m. in the morning, they slaughter a cow. And one person from the family who rush from bed like crazy, drinking the blood from that cow. Yes. Live blood from a cow. Blood will be fusing like ah, and the person will sit there. She will drink the blood until the cow has no more blood. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. And then in the afternoon you've got a ceremony to appease those spirits. How many of you tell me that you don't know that people beat drums in your families speaking to these demons? Throughout the night, 3 a.m. they come out. They begin to prophesy on all of you in the family. Polygamy. This has brought down great men, anointed great men, great people. Polygamy has destroyed Africa. Polygamy, source of witchcraft, source of hatred. People go and buy, not possessed. They actually buy witchcraft to kill my, my small house, my father's small house children. Polygamy. We've got so many families, they, do, they don't talk. Same father, seven mothers. Same father, one father, seven mothers. 24 kids. There's no harmony. There's no peace in the family. You don't talk to each other. Very few that are blessed. We have unity that talk to each other. Can I get an amen from you guys? Amen. Number six, horrible spiritual ignorance. When people see us here doing what we are doing, say, bring your anointing oil. They don't even bring it. They think we are crazy. <laughs> we call that spiritual ignorance. Or see four, that six, say, my people perish. For lack of knowledge, ignorance is terrible as a child of God. You need to know those third of those angels are masquerading today as demons, whether you like it or not. Hallelujah. Number seven, we are now talking of wickedness, witchcraft. That is turned man's life upside down. Witchcraft, sorcery. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. I don't know, you're so blessed in your family if you don't know that they are witches. What does the Bible say in the book of Deuteronomy 22, 18? Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. <laughs> Is the Bible crazy? No. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is why I... Did you give me Ephesians 6, 12? This is why Paul said the weapons of our warfare are what? Are not carnal. They are not physical. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't fight with flesh and blood, guys. Don't hate your sister. Don't hate your brother, your uncle, your cousin. You are not, they are not bad people. It's the spirit. We wrestle not against 
flesh and blood. What do we fight against? I don't want that version. Give me the one that talks about ranking. Ranking of demons. There are ranks in the demon world. Tell me the one that talks about principalities and powers, rulers of darkness. Are we ready? Do we have a verse there? Against principalities and powers. Let's go number one. Mm, you need to read again because do you see some ranking? Demons have ranks. You know, there are only Christians who are not, um, who are not, uh, who are ignorant that you need to honor. In the kingdom of darkness, they honor. They have ranks. It's only you in church, you look at your, pa your, pa your spiritual pastor, your spiritual parent down. You look at them, you look at them head to toe. Put them down yourself. But in the kingdom of darkness, you'll be punished. We have cast demons that tell you that I'll be punished if I get out of him. You know, who, who have ever attended a sermon or a service where demons actually manifest? Now you understand what I'm talking about. They talk. They don't just get out. <laughs> they talk, we are not living here. This is our house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are principalities. They are powers. They are rulers of darkness. They are, they've got rankings. Principalities. What are principalities? Strongholds. You remember the night that we had when we were actually teaching on what are principalities and what will be the demons underneath them, rankings of demons and principalities. You got to know this. You know, even Jesus, when he was casting out demons, he wouldn't just say, get out. Sometimes he would say, who are you? And then the men say, I'm Legion. That means there were 10,000 demons back at the door, but there was one principality. Who had to come the spokesman for 9,999 demons in the man? So it says what? Principalities and what? Come on, what's second in the rank? What is the ranking? What's second in the ranking? Principalities and what? Principalities and what? What? Powers. Powers. Territorial spirits. <laughs> Territorial spirits. Powers. When you enter a city, don't just be naive, child of God. Take possession. Uh -uh. <laughs> you don't just enter a country. They are territorial powers. They are territorial powers. They possess a territory. Have you ever heard in the Bible, I don't have time, have you ever heard in the Bible when Jesus was casting out demons and he was, they were begging Jesus not, them, not to send them out of that territory? I said, have you ever read those scriptures where demons are begging Jesus, leave us to stay in this territory? Demons. They possess, there is a demon for St. Paul in Minnesota. And there is a demon for the United States of America. On every entry of every country, they are. Entrance. Remember on Tuesday, God gave us a revelations on prayer and we were bre breaking what? Gates. We remember we were breaking gates. The Holy Spirit gave us that revelation. And we walked through breaking gates into our lives. They are entrances. No matter how much you have got a beautiful house, if the gate is locked, no matter how blessed you are, honey, if you've got gate is locked, you can't access it. You will not access it. 
No matter how blessed you are with that mansion and everything, everything is in there. You starve to death with hunger because you have no key to the gates. No access for you. Don't play games with the enemy. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we do pray, we bind principalities. These are key demons that actually rule and they give orders to what? To powers of the air. And then to wickedness. What's number three? Rulers. Rulers of darkness. Prince of Persia. Have you forgotten? Prince of Persia in the book of Daniel. Prince of Persia, you think the president is ruling a country? Let me laugh for two. Ha 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 ha! They are princes and princesses who rule nations. Prince of Persia denied me to bring your answer. Prince of Persia. Who is Prince of Persia? In the Bible, in the physical, wasn't there a Prince of Persia? In the physical, they think we have got our prince ruling us, huh? The Persian leader was there. But there was a spirit. This is why you've got to pray. This, the Bible commands you to pray for leadership. It doesn't matter whether you hate Trump or you don't. That doesn't matter. When it comes to the issues of the spirit, you've got to pray. Cast out those spirits of hatred, whatever confusion. Because if you don't, witches and wizards are busy doing their job. And Christians will say, I hate him. Yeah, I hate him. No, that's not your job. Your job is to pray for him. Pray for every word. Leader. But the church talked too much. One day the Lord was showing me what happened to Zimbabwe. Because I was crying. I said, why, God, my country? And the Lord said, Christians made Zimbabwe to be what it is today. By the words of their mouth. Cursing your nation every single day. Every single day, we curse our nation. And it goes, it's like a slogan. The power. You are a God. The power of your words. They come into reality. The words you speak are life. They are power. They will go and wait for you. Listen. I've been teaching about the power of your words. Go and listen. Words. They are life. Ah. I said words. They are what? When you speak them, they become alive. They get some legs. And they begin to walk towards your destiny. And they will go there and they will wait you to arrive. Mm -hmm. They will be waiting for you to arrive. The words you spoke down there, they are here. They see you coming. They wait for you. Uh -huh, come. And they will tell you you can't cross here. Why? Because you said it with your mouth. That's why the devil is always accusing, uh, angry with God, that you're always accusing me that uh, this person must not get this. This person must not be blessed. She doesn't or he doesn't deserve to be blessed. Doesn't deserve a breakthrough. And then the devil is saying, God, the reason why, let me show you. If I tell you by my mouth, you hate me and say devil is bad. But God, let me just do a replay. He replay a video. And you are busy. I will never get married. There are no men in church. You know, there's no wedding these days. Prostitutes are wedding. How do I? And they've been fasting 10 days and 10 nights saying, Lord, I want to have a wedding. And you are busy. Blah, 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 running your mouth like mad. And those words. And God is looking. He's like, Because he's a God of justice, he is forced to honor his word, the power of life and death on your tongue. God is forced. He's a God of justice, guys. God is a God of justice. He cannot deny himself. Whatever you speak upon your life matters. You know what other people who hate you say about you don't matter? Listen to me. If there are people who hate you for who you are, what they say about you doesn't even matter. Not even one single day. Because in prayer you can break the power of those words and render them powerless. Null and void. As long as you don't repeat them. You don't, if they say you're a dog, you suddenly look at the back. I don't have a tail. So I'm not a dog. And you move on. You move on. 
Whatever they say about you, because people have expectations about who you are, where you are going, your destiny, they think they know too much. They don't know you because I belong to Christ. I'm hidden in Christ. Nobody knows about my future. He is the only one who knows about my future. So as a child of God, the words that you speak about yourself is what matter. Not what other people say. Let them say what they say. As long as you don't confirm them, as long as you don't affirm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't conquer. I always tell my daughter, she said, oh, sorry, so said, say this and this about. You. I said, don't ever do that again. Let them talk about that shit. But yo, tell the devil that shit is your shit. It's not my shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to be ruthless with the enemy. Back to sender. Back to the sender. Let it go back where it came from, those words. They wish that you struggle. Let themselves struggle. When you say back to sender in prayer, <laughs> I wish you know the power of prayer that you have. People don't want to pray because they are so ignorant of the power they have over demons. A lot of things are happening in our lives because we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray. There's wickedness in high places. Where are we? Rulers of the darkness of this world. Let me tell you how it operates. Let me tell you how it operates. Systems are not put on earth by God. Do you understand, people of God? Systems are not what? Who makes systems on the earth? In the world, you appoint policy makers. Am I right? You appoint senators, governors, parliamentarians, premiers, and presidents. You give them the power to make what? Laws. And they become systems that you live with. Systems have not been brought by God. There is a system of the kingdom. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They are systems of the kingdom of God. Ah, listen to me. They are systems in the kingdom of God. They are systems of this world. The systems of this world have been made by men. So we have got these systems. We've got, uh, uh, if you look at the entertainment industry, there are laws that govern that industry, right? The medical industry, there are laws um, that govern in the, in the health in the health, uh, that's another mountain standing by itself, right? The medical, uh, the entertainment, uh, the religion, the church, and then there are, there are seven mountains. Help me. What are the other four left? There are seven of them. The education, yes, is one of them. And which else? I need three more. Business, yes, and another two. Family, yes, and another one, last one. Um, okay, I'll get the seven mountains all that operate in the systems in this world. Those systems, for families, for example, you know, you are told that you need a marriage to be able to what? To inherit this and this and this. You need a marriage certificate. All those things, they are systems being put in place by men. So, these systems, this is what, where is the verse, Tuli? Where did it go? I'm just preaching from that verse. So we talked about what? The rulers of this world, right? Rulers of this world. So these are systems. Rulers, rulers of the darkness of this world. These are systems that has been put on earth by men, by human beings. The policy makers, the rulers. It's human beings on this earth because you are supposed to be rulers of this earth, right? And in the process, they are influenced by demonic powers and satanic powers to make some of these policies that you should abort, kill a child, do this, uh, legalize prostitution, legal, you know, legalize marijuana. And you people, Christians, are just like, ah, they are so evil. What are you doing about it? Rise and pray. God is counting on you. God is counting on you. He put you on this earth for a reason. You are a Christian for a reason. Not just to enjoy blessings. I want to be a millionaire. Why should he make you a millionaire? 
Why must he give you a million dollars? You are so selfish. You are into yourself. It's all about you and your family. Nothing else about the kingdom of God. Why must you get a million dollars? You don't deserve it. In Jesus' name, we lock it up. Because if it comes, you curse God. If it is a man, you have 17 wives. Because he was blessed by God. If you give him a car, he had a bicycle. He, he will actually run over you. Beep, 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 all the way. <laughs> People, get off the way, get off the way. Because somebody's coming with a beautiful car. Come on. God blesses us not for ourselves, but to advance his kingdom. To advance his kingdom. So church, we come here, we just sit, we preach right now. After preaching, you go, you take your Bible and all this message, you shove it. You do nothing about it. There's got to be some action from you, child of God. You must rise up and pray. You must break the power of the enemy. You must pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How will the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven if we don't pray? We must stop them. Jesus always stopped them in their tricks. And you are allowing them to do what they want. You don't go and vote. Go and vote out there. Don't just seek. It's not for non-believers. It's for you Christians. Pray. If you don't pray, what they are saying, you will see it or pray. Bind the plan of the enemy against the people of God. Pray and say, God, give us leaders who have the love of people on their hearts. Because people don't belong to the president or the prime minister. People, they belong to Yahweh. They belong to God. So your prayer matters. Your vote counts. Don't just sit in the church and say amen and enjoy blessings and do absolutely nothing. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the earth. You must shine out there. The world is waiting for Christian leaders. We need you guys to rise up, become presidents, house of representatives, senators from the church, governors from the church, presidents and prime ministers from the church because you know the law of God, because you fear God. It is the fear of God that will bring back humanity to Yahweh. But demonic powers, they hold our minds so much and we are so contented in the four walls. As long as I came and enjoyed myself, as long as I prayed for the breakthrough, and the breakthrough you are praying for is very selfish. You are just praying that God will give you a breakthrough for 10,000. What is 10,000? What is it going to do? You can't even bring an offering to church. And you are praying for 10,000. Pray for the real blessing of God. So that you have more than enough to feed the orphans in the street. To build homes and shelters. Don't be selfish, Christian. You are a Christian. Don't be selfish. Don't think about you and your family only. How about the world is waiting for you? The world is waiting for believers. The world is waiting for the children of God to rise in dominion, to rise in power, to rise in authority. We must take over. What the devil has is not his, it's ours. Come on, I say it is not his. It's yours, you're not a beggar. It's yours. You spend 365 days praying for money every single day. Did he say he cannot be, give it to us? Can he say, did he say that? It's not for your personal pleasure to show off to people. That's why we don't get the answers. Because your motive is very wrong. The motive is wrong. Hallelujah. What is the last one? Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual what? In high places. This is a network of demons. <laughs> you wonder, but I'm in America. How come they know I was about to get a new job? You wonder, but I'm here in America. Why are things going left the way they were going when I was in Africa? How did they know that I left and I'm in America? They also have their own mirrors. They have satanic, what we call satanic networks. There is a satanic database. 
There is a surveillance on everyone who does not know Jesus. If you know Jesus and you don't protect yourself, this is why the man of God, Paul says, you've got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. You've got to put on the helmet of salvation. As a child of God, don't walk naked. Some of you, you don't read the Bible. You are so open and naked. The devil does what he wants every single day. The job is to gossip. Speak the word. The word of God is life. It's power. Sharper than any two-edged sword. If you understand who God is, every time, that's why when we pray, we bind principalities. We bind powers of the air. These powers of the air, they work with our media. Powers of the air, they work with media. Entertainment industry. Aha, uh -huh. that's why for you to make it in Hollywood. You talk, they talk of Illuminati and you think they are crazy. You know what the devil does? He will never allow your mind to comprehend him, to believe there is evil. That first thing he does is catch your mind. Manipulate, oppress it. So that you think there is no devil. So now in America, when I came here, I was so shocked. I see these things that we see in Africa here. They've been pack packaged nicely in the Halloween. huh? Packaged so nicely in names that you are looking at. It's just a name, especially us who are coming from Africa. It's just a name. No, look deeper into it. Look deeper. Don't just do yoga. What are you doing? They asked you to empty out and what do you put in when you're empty? You don't even have the word. Hallelujah. We pray against principalities, powers of the air, wickedness in high places. That's leadership. Wickedness in high places. They make decisions for your families. And now they tell you that you can marry this one and that one. They actually dictate who you should marry. And against the law of God. The Bible is there clearly telling you that it's only a woman who conceives a baby. Not a man. God didn't create Esther and Eve. God created Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. They are strong men who exert influence over our lives. We must forbid them in the name of Jesus. We must forbid them from operating. We got to rise church and forbid them. We must stop evil from advancing. We must stand as children of God. And we must push back the enemy. The reason why you haven't seen the mark of the beast is because there are people who are on watchtowers. They are on the tower praying day and night, pushing back the will of the enemy. If we don't pray, 666 six, six will come now. I'm telling you, we have got to pray, church. Open your eyes and pray. Don't just sit. You know, a lot of people, they earn a lot of money. They don't see what it does. And they think, oh, it's okay. It's not okay. It's sacrifice to the devil. You need to pray. Ah, my sister, I would tell you, my brother had a job. He was a teacher. All the other teachers in his school, they bought homes, built houses. He, was not, he didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He didn't have a small house. The same salary. Others bought homes, married, had lives. Paycheck to paycheck, he would come to ask for bus fare at the end of the month. He was not a gambler. What do you call that? What do you call that? The same salary, the same school. Others, they buy cars, they buy homes. They help their parents to even to build homes. And you get your salary. By the end of the month, you don't know what you've done with it. And you think that's normal. No, honey. No, honey. It's not normal. In your family, there are systems. One sister gets married and is divorced. The next one gets It starts with your aunties. All of them, they got married. The other one divorced. Then the other one got married, divorced. The other one, seven of your aunties, they never married all of them. They all married and got divorced. With one kid, all of them. 
Now it's coming to you and your sisters. One kid and you're divorced. One kid and you're divorced. And you think that's normal and you're sleeping. Oh, it's the will of God. No! Wickedness. Systems in the family. Things that have been done by our fathers. Things that have been done by those who have gone ahead of us. The Bible says our fathers have done what? Eaten the sour grapes. And we children, we now suffer consequences of those grapes that they ate. Our, our teeth are set on the edge. Who knows that verse where it is? Find it and let Tuli put it up there. We suffer not because of the things that we've done, but we suffer because of what our ancestors have done. But we thank God for Jesus. We thank God for Jesus. I talked about ignorance. My people perish for lack of ignorance. But we thank God for Jesus because Jesus came to give us life. Jesus came to give us victory. Jesus came to deliver us. And we have been delivered through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 23, 14, David stayed in the desert strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Or it could be a man-made fortress or tower. These are called strongholds in families. Even David, a great man of God, encountered strongholds along his path. Though anointed, mightly used by God. Demons, they don't care that you're a pastor. Hey, hey, ask me, I'll tell you. They don't care that you're a pastor. If you are ignorant, they'll kick you left, right, and center. They'll destroy you. Marriage after marriage, seven marriages, one woman. And you are not seeing that my auntie had six marriages. My auntie, my other auntie had four. My, my sister had three. Now I'm on two. And you don't care, you're also going there. If you don't stop the devil in his tracks, he will stop you. So we should not be on the, on the, on the uh, offensive side as Christians. Do you understand? We don't have to be on the uh, defensive. Am I right? We don't have to be on the defensive side. We have to be on the what? Offensive. So that means as a child of God, no matter what you know and what you don't know, we have got the spirit of God upon our lives. The spirit of discernment. I always tell you, my children, go back and ask the Lord to reveal what is the stronghold of your family so that you'll be able to stand against it. If you don't have a father to ask, pray. God can reveal I discovered my secret in my family at the age of 14. I discovered a secret in my family at the age of 14 where I saw all my sisters, well-educated, prince, uh, what do you call, superintendents in schools, headmistresses, nurses, beautiful women. None of them was married. 21 of us. At the age of 14, I was blessed. The spirit of obedience will help you. If you come to church, come in a spirit of humility and obedience. Don't look up and down. I may not be beautiful, but what I speak is the word of God. That's all you came for, not me. So when you, hey, I tell you things, hey, 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 hey. it's okay, but it's you who suffers. I listened to my spiritual mother, Mama Guti, she was preaching. And she said, there are what we call strongholds and cycles in family. I was a small girl at the age of Matida. Very small girl. And I had, I started to look back in my family. Why are we, are all my aunties and sisters not married? Why? Why? And I became inquisitive. I started becoming a radical prayer warrior. Sacrificed my life into prayer. Gave everything that I had in God. Became in God. I began to pray and fast. Until the age of 24, I got married. Today, uh, we are celebrating what, 28? 28 years of marriage. So I'm saying to say Jesus can set you free. I'm not speaking from what I read from a book. I'm speaking from experience. Because I've fought my own battles and I know how the devil works. 
Cycles can be broken. Generational cases can be broken. They can be broken. And you can stop them because you have got the power. But if you are lazy to pray, <laughs> they will play games with you. In my closing, I want to speak the power of prayer is what you need in your life. You don't need a lot of things, but you need a life of prayer, a life committed to God, a life sold out. God will bring down that thing called pride in us that causes us to be hindered in prayer. One terrible weapon that the devil loves to use to enter people's lives is pride. <laughs> All these things you can do, you will run away very quickly. But pride, because it's hard to detect it, right? You may not even know that you are proud. You got pride. And you can be coming to church all this time. And that's the only door. And you keep wondering. When the Lord revealed this to, to me, I was shocked. To say a lot of Christians, they have an open door through pride. Because remember, it's only pride that Satan, what? Rebelled against God. It was through what? And he makes sure it comes so subtle, you've got pride. You can't listen to anybody. Nobody should tell you what to do. You know it all. And that's an open door. It's an open door. But today, you need to make a decision. Deliverance, you can actually minister deliverance as a child of God on yourself. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can. We had deliverance online. When was that? When was that? Last week? No, no, no. I mean, last week, I think. And, you know, people started calling. And they'll say, Pastor, as you were praying, I was vomiting. Somebody was saying, Pastor, when you were praying, I was, my stomach started running. And somebody was saying, Pastor, when you were praying, I started sweating. I took a towel. A whole towel was wet with sweat. They come out. If you want them to go, demons don't leave you when you love them. They stay. Yeah, if you love them, they stay. They don't have to go. They are your company. But you've got power. We have what? Power. We have what? Power. We have what? Power. In the name of? Jesus. Give me verse 2. We rise our not against flesh and blood. But what? Give me verse 2 and we're going to pray now. I'm going to ask you to rise up as we read that one. If you have been struggling in your life, with depression, witchcraft, depression. You know, there is depression that comes from the devil. He just looks at you and he wants you to know as if things are not going to happen. He brings what you call satanic depression. Today you need that to go. You know, the devil has been holding on to your stuff. And you are just saying it's the will of God. It's not the will of God. I said it's not the will of God. Evil does not come from God. It comes from the devil. Kick it out. Kick it out. Kick it out. In the name of Jesus. Let's read together. For we wrestle not against what? But against? And what? Against what? Aha. Finish it up. Now I want to give us Ephesians. We're going to pray now. We're going to pray now. Ephesians chapter 1. You are going to pray for yourself. If you have never prayed for yourself, you need your door on your own deliverance. Go to Revelation, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Give me verse uh, 20, I think 19. Give me 20. Okay. Did you, did you get it? Ephesians 1 verse 19, let's go. I also pray that you, you will understand the incredible and greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power, verse 20, that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the places of honor and God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Verse 21, now he is far above principalities and powers. Give it to me. Come on, let's read together. Read verse 21 one more time. Read verse 21 again. Power 
Go 22, verse 22. What does it say? God has put all things under the authority of Christ. He has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. Come on, come on, come on. He has put it all under your feet. Let's read together. And God... Who is the church? I am the church of Christ. You are the church. Verse 23. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. So here's a question. If Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he has put all these principalities and powers under him. Where are you seated? Give us Revelation Ephesians 2 verse 6. Where are you seated? You are the church. You are a child of God. Where are you seated? The answer is Ephesians 2 verse 6. Come on, let's read it together. Raise us up. Now, okay. Okay. Where it says raise us up, put your name there. Let's go. And God raised Rebecca with Christ and seated Rebecca with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Rejoice. Now, you're going to raise your voice. You know the systems in your family. You know what is going on in your family. Poverty, you are struggling. You live from paycheck to paycheck. Nobody's married in your family. No marriage is coming. Things are not moving. You start a business. It did never move forward. In class, you are not smart. You are down. Come on, raise your voice. Principalities and powers, they are under your feet. Pray. Come on, child of God, pray. Raise your voice. Mashaka Tarabosa. In the mighty name of Jesus, I forbid kings, I forbid princes, I forbid world rulers. For each spirit named, I strip each spirit, its hierarchy of power, armor and rank. I separate each from other. I speak confusion in the ranks of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I pull down strongholds in my family. I come against them. I break cycles, cycles of cancer. I break cycles, cycles of hate. I break cycles, cycles of pride. In the name name of Jesus. Masatari akatarabash. Masatari abakasha. Glatton spirit go. Your spirit of glatton. I take authority over you. I break your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your spirit of lack. Your spirit of poverty. Your spirit of struggle in marriages. I break your power. Your spirit of barrenness. I take authority over you. I render you powerless. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. We are going to bind. I'm going to pray over you. I want you to raise your hands wherever you are. Maybe your family, you are struggling with cancer, breast cancer, uterus cancer. Your grandmother had, had breast cancer. Your own mom died of cancer, breast cancer. And you are now having breast cancer. Your children will also have breast cancer, uterus cancer, whatever cancer. Tonight, you're going to put a stop to that nonsense. That devil is a liar. That devil is a liar. He is a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. From your aunties, they get married and get divorced. They get married, they get divorced. 
Now you are almost on the verge of divorce. You got to put a stop to that nonsense. In the name of Jesus. Others you get married and the husband dies. Your auntie or husband, your husband dies. A family of widows. You are going to put a stop to that nonsense. In the name of Jesus. Put a stop to that nonsense. The devil is a liar. You are a child of God. Everything is under your feet. You got to break the cycle. Break the cycle. In the name of Jesus. The cycle must be broken. The cycle must be broken today. You must be set free. The devil has put a limitation on your family. No one can go to master's level. You all die on bachelors. Nothing will go above that. But today break it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. Shokotorobokosata. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. When you sleep, you have got dreams, having sex in the dream. You got spiritual husbands. You got a spiritual wife. When you go to sleep, you see those things. Having sex with you in the dream. I want to put a stop to that nonsense. Marine spirit will put a stop. In the name of Jesus. Spirit husband go. Back to the pit of hell. In the name of Jesus. There are people here. Who have opened doors through pornography. And masturbation. You opened a door. Spirit husbands come in. Spirit wives come in. Spirit of drunkenness. Spirit of alcoholism. Spirit of prostitution. Now it attacks your family. We break it in the name of Jesus. 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 This is your day to be set free in your family. In your family. Your aunties were barren. Either you only have one child or nothing. Oh, from your aunties, one child. Oh, all of you, you are barren. We break the spirit of barrenness in the name of Jesus. We break the spirit of barrenness in the name of Jesus. Makatarabashata. Shikatarabashataya. We bind and break power of all curses. Curses that has been spoken over you. They said you cannot. They said you will never be married. They said you will not make it in life. We break the power of those words. Over your life we break them. Words that were spoken by your parents over your life. That has come to haunt your life today. We break the power of those words. In the name of Jesus. We set you free. In Jesus mighty name. The Bible says. Who the son of man sets free. Shall be free indeed. I declare you free in Jesus name. I declare you free in the name of Jesus. I declare you free now. In the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. I declare and declare prosperity. I declare marriage you be married. I declare marriage over you. Success you will have children. You will enjoy your own children. You will enjoy your marriage. In the name of Jesus. You will have health. I declare it over your life. In Jesus mighty name. You are not a failure. You will make it in Jesus name. You are a success in the name of Jesus. I want to break the spirit of gluttony. It's a demonic spirit that has tormented a lot of people. The spirit of gluttony. Let's take authority and bind it in a minute. We take authority over the spirit of gluttony. We bind you. We cast you out of our lives. 
Go now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Therefore, this morning before you leave this place, I decree and declare over your life that a turnaround is for you today. In Jesus' mighty name, a turnaround, a turnaround. Now grab your oil, lift it in the air. Grab your anointing oil. It is not the anointing. For you who didn't bring it, don't worry. Receive my prayer. And when you go home, go and look for a very small bottle of olive oil. The power is not in the olive oil, no. The power is in the name of Jesus. So as we pray for that anointing oil, the power in the name of Jesus will break the bondage. The Bible says it is the what? The anointing that breaks the yoke. It is not the oil. It is the anointing in that oil that will break the bond. That will break that bondage. Oil is just a symbol that you need to use. God commanded Moses among the ingredients, the ingredients he gave to Moses, olive oil was one of it. And by faith, we're going to use this oil. There is just the oil. If you use it like oil, it's just the oil. You got to have faith when you apply it. As the blood of Jesus. If your children have been having nightmares, put it on the door. Speak the blood of Jesus. Put it all around your house. Speak the blood of Jesus. When you go to work in the morning, put it a drop in your oil, in your lotion, and then pray and go. The anointing will break the yoke of the enemy. Raise the oil. If you didn't bring it, raise your hands. I'm speaking into your hands. You must learn to read the um, announcements on the church forum so that you know what's going on in church. Raise your hands if you didn't bring it. I'm going to release the same blessing when you touch your oil. You speak the blood of Jesus. And the Lord will pour out an anointing upon that oil. From today, your children shall be free. From today, things that have been happening in your life, they will stop in the name of Jesus. The spirits that were sleeping with you in your dreams, today they stop in the name of Jesus. Today they stop in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing of Yahweh upon those hands, upon this anointing oil. From today as they touch it, may something happen in their lives. May there be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. May there be peace in their lives in the name of Jesus. I release the power of the blood of Jesus Christ to pour an anointing on every oil upon each and every one. From today, those things that died prematurely in the lives and in the hands of your children, I speak life in Jesus' mighty name. I call upon and I release the spirit of the Lord upon you, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of power and might, the spirit of knowledge and counsel, the spirit of mercy and grace, I release it upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the only son of the living God, the one who is seated at the right hand of the Father together with you. I speak a blessing over you. I bless you tonight in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Please come again early next week.